Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at this. Now this is a 13 amp socket, commonly used in the UK for pretty much everything, and unsurprisingly it's rated at 13 amps, or at least a maximum of, roughly about 3 kilowatts depending on the supply voltage. But what about one of these, which is two of them on a single plate? Is this rated to 13 amps for the two, as in shared? Is it 13 amps each, so 26 in total? Or is it some other value? And also, what about plugging in two appliances rated, say, 3 kilowatts each, into one each side, and then leaving them both on for an extended time? Is this going to cause overheating, failure, and whatever? Or is it actually perfectly fine? So, let's find out. Now, this is a standard UK socket outlet made to BS1363 and these are rated 13 amps maximum and the reason for that that in the corresponding plug these have a fuse inside the maximum of which is 13 amps this one have also a 3 amp fuse in but uh, that's because you can actually buy these with fuses other than 13 in because in most cases 3 or 5 amps is far more appropriate but uh, if I have a look inside you see there is a fuse in there 3 amp variety so the maximum you can get out of one of these is limited by the fuse in the plug. Say 3 amps in that case, 5 and 13 being the most common. So that corresponds to approximately 3 kilowatts, or about 3,000 watts, in the case of uh, a 230 or 240 volt supply. And that just shoves in there, and uh, all is well. So uh, 13 amps for that one. I say the fuses are rated up to 13. There is uh, such a thing there. And if you do come across any others like this dubious piece here, which it says 15 on it, then it is fake. This claims to be made by Bussman, but it's not. This is just some fake piece uh, should not be used. And of course, if you come across one of these, it says 20. Well, that's fake as well. But uh, fakes aside, 13 amps for that, perfectly fine. And you have a look on the back, it actually says here 13 amps, 250 volts, so those being maximums. Voltage in the UK is usually about 240. Officially it's 230 plus or minus some percentage, but uh, nevertheless, uh, there we have it. And uh, BS1363. Now that's perfectly fine, but what about this one? Well, this is a twin outlet, single set of wiring on the back, and again, it still says 13 amps, 250 volts, just like the other one did, and it's BS1363 just as before. So the um, question is then, is it 13 amps here? And then you plug another 13 amps in in here, making a total of 26, or roughly in the region of 6 kilowatts coming out of one of these. Well, easy way to find out is to look in the standard for these devices. And the most important part is table 10, which is uh, describing a certain test that's done, and this will be done by manufacturers or four manufacturers of these things. So uh, on the left here we've got number of outlets, uh, 1, 2, and also more than that if they're fused or not. And as you can see there, the test basically applies a certain amount of current to the outlet, and also in some cases an extra current with a cable supplying it, and that's all to do with temperature rise. And this test is actually applied for up to four hours, or until the uh, temperature stabilizes, and the maximum temperature rise is 52 Kelvin, which basically means you started out with, say, a room of around uh, 18 or 20 centigrade, then you're looking at a temperature, finally, of in the region of 70, which is pretty hot. Certainly hot enough to burn your fingers or whatever if you touch that. Now we can see that the uh, test, if it's just for a single outlet, as in one at the top there, is 14 amps, with an additional 6 amps on the cable, making a total of 20. This is important because the cable acts as a heat sink, which will take some of the heat away, when it's in use, so by putting a bit of load there it's just uh, warming up the cable a bit beforehand to uh, limit that effect. So one of them definitely allowed to go up to 13 because say, it's tested at 14 for up to 4 hours, so again, not a problem. Two of them, however, as we see there in the uh, second line, it's uh, 14 amps in one outlet and 6 amps in the other one, so uh, could be 14 amps here and 6 amps in there, or equally uh, 14 in here and 6 over there, so 20 in total, even though it says 13. So if you buy any of these, pretty much they're all going to be good enough for at least 20 amps certainly shared between the outlets, and that would include, say, putting a full 13 amp 3 kilowatt load in one side and some smaller thing on the other, and also bearing in mind that they're tested for 4 hours, so that's a pretty unlikely scenario in the real world. And just to complete this, the other test there, if you've got more than one and it's actually fused, that would imply two or three with a fuse in it, 
and it is going to be one of those 13 amp fuses that we uh, saw previously in those cases. Those typically come under things like a triple outlet with a 13 amp fuse stuck in the face. MK and a few other people make those, but they're not very popular. The test for that is just 14 amps in one of them, and of course the reason for that is that it's all fuse at a maximum of 13 amps, so if you went much more above that it would obviously blow the fuse and not work. So for one outlet, yes, easily going to do 13 amps, it's tested for that. If you've got more than one outlet, as in two or three or whatever, with a fuse in the front of it, then it's still rated for 13 amps in total, again, because of course the fuse is there. And if you've got an outlet which has more than two, as in three or four or whatever, which is unfused, then it's actually two lots of 14 amps, which means theoretically a total of 28. However, I'm not aware of anyone actually making a triple or above which doesn't have a fuse in it, although such things are apparently possible, but it seems a pretty unlikely uh, scenario to have. So the deal is then, these are rated to approximately 20 amps. In some cases it could easily do more, because bearing around that standard is just a minimum that has to be met. It doesn't mean that other manufacturers could make things uh, somewhat better than the minimum standard, but uh, nevertheless, 20 amps divided by the two, 14 in one and 6 in another in the case of the test, but obviously in the real world it could be 10 in each or something. It's about the heating effect of the current going through the various parts of the socket plug and of course the conductors attached to the rear. Now what about the situation in the kitchen, and this comes up quite often, where you've got a uh, say, washing machine and a dishwasher and you want to plug them both into the same outlet because they're quite often located next to each other, typically either side of the sink because that's where the water and waste pipes go. Now, of course a lot of people say, well you can't possibly do that because these aren't rated to whatever and they're going to melt and flames come out and all of that, and I'm sure many people have actually seen things like that, but the reality is you could put a double in and put a washing machine here and a dishwasher there, and the reason being that most modern dishwashers, and by modern we're talking made in the last 20 years plus, only have 1800 to 2000 watt heating elements in them, and although they have a motor and whatever, that's a relatively small loading. So even when the heating element's on, you're only looking in the region of say 10 amps or so for each, so even if they were both heating at the same time, two lots of 10 amps makes 20, which of course is uh, the actual test which is used for these. And the other important point as well is that a washing machine or dishwasher only heats the water for a few minutes at a time. Even a dishwasher on say a 70 degree cycle or something is only be heating the water for say 20 minutes, half an hour perhaps maybe. Not the four hours plus of the test which is applied to these. And again the same with the washing machine. The vast amount of water used by a washing machine is cold for the rinses and whatever. The actual heating up part, again, only a sort of 10, 15 minutes or so at most. Now that doesn't mean you can't put two singles in a cupboard, and in some cases you may want to do that, particularly if it's going to be one on either side, so dishwasher over there, washing machine over there, because of course they may have short leads and it might be more convenient to do it. So uh, yes, by all means do it, but if you get one of these and it's got two higher powered appliances in it, even including something like a tumble dryer, which might draw, say, 10 amps or so for half an hour, an hour, or two hours. The other side, again, is only going to be a lower powered thing, even if it's a dishwasher, say, only on for 10 minutes or whatever. So, yes, you can put two of those appliances into a thing like this, but of course, you may want to put two singles in. Obviously, it's your choice. Now, while we've got these sockets here, just a final point on some of these can be allegedly used for electric vehicle charging. That's so where you're going to plug in that sort of what's called a granny lead into the uh, 13 amp outlet and then slowly charge your electric vehicle, typically the maximum current of about 10 amps or so, which for uh, many cars will take uh, many, many hours to add even at moderate distance. But those that are intended to be used for that have on the back here where it says uh, 1363, it says slash EV at the end. This isn't one of those. Here's a picture of one that is, but that looks pretty much the same. Now the only difference uh, between ones which are marked EV and those which are not is that those which are marked up with EV have a couple of additional tests, or tests which are done anyway but are slightly more arduous. So uh, it's not a question of are they made differently or different construction or have extra things inside because they don't. It's just whether the manufacturer has paid to have certain additional tests done on them, and if it had and those tests have passed, well, then they can stick EV at the end. So there's nothing special about uh, EV socket outlets, other than the fact that they've been tested slightly differently. And the main test is uh, the one which involves uh, putting a plug in and then taking the plug out and many numbers of times. 
The only difference with that is that for the EV test it's done uh, with an inductive load connected whereas normally it's done with something which has a power factor near to 1 and then also the one with the switches. The switches have to be operated a certain number of times, a lot, and again the one for the EV testing is done with an inductive load whereas normally it's just done with a standard resistive load. So the only EV difference is about the contacts of things being somewhat more robust if you're going to be, say, breaking inductive load, it may cause a bit of sparking or arcing on those. And again, the switch is possibly designed to be uh, a bit more robust as well. So lots of existing socket outlets probably meet those requirements already. It's just a question of whether the manufacturer has had the additional testing done so they can stick uh, slash EV on the end of the number at the back and then mark it up as suitable for electric vehicles. On the back, of course, you don't see any difference from the front. So there we go. Yes, you can use one of these for two high-loaded appliances. You're not going to get anywhere near 13 amps each for any kind of sustained amount of time in a normal situation. Yes, theoretically, if you've got two electric heaters and plug them in, it might uh, get up somewhere near that. But even with electric heaters, most of those are only around 2 kilowatts now. So you've got some old thing which was 3 kilowatts and put two of them in there, possibly. But highly unlikely you're going to want 6 kilowatts of electric heating in a room for many hours and yes in theory you could get two granny lead chargers for your electric vehicle and plug two in here and possibly overload it but again they're only rated about 10 amps each so that's still the 20 amps. Most of the problem with overheating comes from the plugs. This particular one is a uh, brass or brass coloured pins which don't seem to be a problem. Those which generally are melted and overheating usually have silver coloured pins so quite honestly if you see any silver coloured pins chop it off and fit a decent plug instead. Anyway, that is it for this particular video, and until next time, thanks for watching.